And now, now from now, Candlestick now. Point in San Francisco, California, it's the Stick, Stick, Stick 49er Podcast Show with your hosts, Lucas McLaughlin and Lucas Ortiz. Please like and subscribe. San Francisco, we don't know what they are because they're in uncharted territory. Week 17, Niner Seahawks. We're playing a great opponent, and we understand that. We're looking very much forward to it. Nothing's changed. It's always on the tight end. It's always on us. Take it to them every step. Be physical and grind all four quarters. Tights out three, one, two, three. Tights. First and 10, 49ers on the Seattle 13 yard line. Gun run to Morrison off the left side. Big hole. Five. Touchdown. San Francisco. Woo, woo, woo. How about that? Down. Here's your game. Here's Russell Wilson back. Wilson throws, caught. Hollister's hit on the goal line and dropped by Drake Reedlaw. He is short. Okay. 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 What an epic, epic stop. Finishes off the best game of his life here in the most important game with a tackle on Jacob Hollister. Just dropped his right shoulder right into Hollister's left shoulder pad and stood him up inches away from the goal line. The 49ers. They're going to win the NFC West. Hey, fellas, it feels good. It feels good to say champions on the hat, but this ain't enough, like they said. So get your bodies right. We got more to do. So celebrate for 24 hours, but we got to get ready to do it again. It's got more work. Let's celebrate. Now it's up three, one, two, three. Yay! Well, 49er fans, without the pressure of the postseason, the 49ers beat Arizona 20-12 to with their third-string quarterback, C.J. Beathard. And it feels good to get a win, even if we're spoilers and not going to the postseason. I'm joined by my colleague and good friend, Lucas Ortiz now. Lucas, you there? What's up, Lucas? I'm here, man. Isn't it a sigh of relief, even if we're not going to the postseason, just to see how we played against Arizona Saturday? It just made you feel good, right? Absolutely. Yeah, you know, to, to to quote Jimmy G last year, it feels great, baby. I mean, especially for CJ Beathard, right? Oh, yeah. Um, I think it was a year to the day that his his brother passed away in Nashville. And for him to get a win on that anniversary was was, you know, pretty cool. I think um I think someone someone above was smiling down on him and and, and cheering him on or or rooting him on and he performed well. I thought he thought he had a hell of a game and it was just nice to see uh you know him perform the way we we've wanted him to to play all year exactly although he hasn't really got although he, you know truthfully he hasn't really gotten the opportunity as much as, as nick mullins has so yeah yeah cj's first start since 2018 wow he finishes 13 of 22 for 182 yards and three touchdown passes he did have the one fumble but what i like just watching cj play I thought Kyle designed a great game plan to sort of protect him in a way he didn't make big mistakes. And we have seen so many big quarterback mistakes in recent weeks that it was nice to just see an all around solid game. And uh, wow. Jeff Wilson jr. What a game, right? That was pretty awesome to see. Finally, you know, we've been talking about that all season that we need. There just hasn't been enough games where we really dominate with the running game and Jeff Wilson jr. Put the team on his back and man, it was nice to see someone finally get over a hundred yards. Absolutely. You know, it was really the offensive line that put the team on their back. Jeff Wilson was running through some pretty nice holes. albeit he was gaining a lot of yards after contact and breaking tackles and, you know, just really running downhill and getting the most out of every play, but the offensive line, did a stellar job of creating those holes and, and just, you know, uh, giving the, giving the team some, some continuity, just kind of, just kind of previewing, uh, inside the trenches. But I just really want to point out that the offensive line came out to play. And I'm really excited that those guys were able to have that type of game. And, you know, it just goes to show when we, when we play that kind of football, our team is really hard to beat with the kind of defense that we have, if we can get, 150 plus yards on the ground and control it that way. It doesn't really matter who we're playing, whether it be the chiefs, the Ravens, the Steelers, the Seahawks, we can beat any team because we have a, a super bowl caliber defense. And I think when we, 
we dictate how we want to play offensively, it just makes that big of a difference. We just, we're, we're able to create more opportunities and, and sustain drives when we're able to block that way. For sure. And I think Jeff Wilson Jr.'s longest run was about 34, 35 yards. He finishes with 22 carries for 183 yards and a big help in the blocking game with the run is the return of George Kittle and the spark that he provides. What was it like to see George Kittle back and healthy again? Well, I don't know about you, but I was pumped to see George back on the field. I mean, he's my absolute Hell yeah. favorite player on the 49ers. You know, Fred Warner and Nick Bosa are the close, close second and third, but you know, that's the guy that gives me the most goosebumps when I watch make a big play, break tackles. Whether you're cold, scared, or listening to some great music, you've likely experienced goosebumps at some point in your life. Named after the way poultry looks when plucked, goosebumps are a fairly useless trait in humans. Get all those yak yards. He lives to block just as much as he does. He doesn't catch a uh, touchdown, so it's really cool to see him being able to bring that, that type of uh, explosiveness to both parts of the game. And it was, it was cool, man. He had four catches for almost 100 yards, but it just seemed like he had more of an impact than even just that, like his run blocking, like you said, and his leadership. That's been something that's been sorely missed on this team. So it was, uh, yeah. it was pretty awesome. Man. I don't know about you, but I, I would love to see him bring some more of that energy to next game and score some touchdowns maybe next time against the Seahawks or bring that type of game, right? Hell yeah. And, you know, you can almost tell that, George Kittle and CJ are good buddies. And I think that just having Kittle back also just uplifted the whole offense and just seeing him out there. And he was not out there as much as we would have liked because he was sort of on a snap count, I believe. But man, to, yeah, to finish with four catches for 92 yards and to do what he does in the blocking game, allowing you know Jeff Wilson Jr. to have such a huge game with the help of the line, that was such a relief just to see the difference it makes to have your star back in the lineup. You know, we didn't really have a lot of huge passing plays, but the the ones to Kittle were pretty exciting. I would have liked to have seen some some more balls thrown Brandon Ayuk's way. It doesn't look yeah. like the rookie's going to get Jerry Rice's rookie rookie receiving record this year or any <laughs> year. <laughs> Unless you only get one rookie year, right? Exactly. But that record isn't going to be broken. But, you know, it, he had one catch, and I think next week he's, he's probably going to have some more opportunities and we'll see how that goes. But it was just more of a running game. It was a, uh, it was a game where we controlled it on the ground and there was no reason to really throw too much downfield because we didn't really have to against this team. Yeah. And we'll get into the trenches here in a minute, but just to look at the defensive side of the ball and we're talking like Damon said, backups galore. I mean, we were without Sherman, without Kinlaw, without Ward, and they still showed their depth. And again, Witherspoon had a big game and a huge play late to get that interception in, in the end zone, which was just, I love that he's looking back for the ball, especially with their best receiver who usually gets those catches. Right. And it was nice to see his, his confidence kind of come back. You know, he got beaten on some, on some throws. I remember there was one big throw that he got beat on, but he didn't let it get him down. It didn't stop him from playing his game and being aggressive. And I'm glad that he was able to recover from a bad play to come up with that huge play at the end of the game. Yeah. Hey, 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 there's that sound again. Oh, Just there it time. is. Well, Pat has taken the rest of the season off and sends his warmest regards. Pat and his robot will be back next season for Pat's picks, so stay tuned. In the meantime... We have another classic call to Damon Bruce, the 300th episode. Please enjoy. Go Niners. And let's wrap things up tonight. I don't know if any of you heard. I mentioned it slightly. We're not going to pretend that it's a big milestone, but tonight is show number 300. So that means we tip our glasses with the great Pat Summer. Good afternoon, Damon. <laughs> Good afternoon, Pat. Good evening, I should say. <laughs> A lot of talk about bridges. I nearly forgot what I was going to tell you, David. What was that, Pat? Now, it gives me a very warm feeling inside to congratulate you on number 300. You sure that's not the scotch giving you a warm feeling inside? I would like to tip my glass to you, Damon. Thank you for so many, many great shows. 
<laughs> Thank you very I much. I really appreciate it. And now and is, so does Jerry Rice. <laughs> is yes, this a, David. Uh, yes, yes, Pat. I'd like to talk a little bit about J.T. Snow. We need to get him back on the field, Damon. And I mean playing. Bring in George Lucas. We need to do something, Damon. A CGI? I think so. That was the name for it, I believe. Uh, yeah, a little Jar Jar Binks, J.T. Snow action? Yes. How would, how would Pat Summerall call touchdown Jar Jar Binks? Jar Jar Binks should die, Damon. <laughs> but I digress. Now, Damon, a wise man once said, a man has a right to stand on the street corner with his hands in his pockets, feeling nuts. Thank you very much, David. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. And, oh, the great Pat Summerall, good enough to put down a microphone for just a minute and join us here as we wrap up Sports Phone 680. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Pat, for calling. Not to mention Verrett, who also had another solid game. k who got hurt and then came back, who looked like he was going to be done, and then he comes back in. They really showed a great effort on D Warner as always. Yeah, he was yeah, he was everywhere. Had some great plays in that game. The two huge stops in the fourth quarter and the two fourth downs that we stopped them on, including the last play of the game. I mean, what a great defensive effort. And you could see the enthusiasm with Sala jumping up and down on the sidelines when he saw uh, Witherspoon come down with that ball. Yeah, I think that was one of those plays where, you know, his instincts just really kicked in and he, he kind of knew where they wanted to go. I mean, they were going to attack him knowing that he was the weaker of the two cornerbacks and he was able yeah. to just be in the spot faster than the receiver was, you know, albeit the, the throw was a little bit underthrown, but, you know, he was there to make the play. And I, I think, I think we can see a little bit more of that next week. And who knows, you know, he may have played himself back onto the team for next year. Yeah, you never know. I mean, I was thinking the same thing. Either some other team is going to pick him up because he looks good now, or we'll re-sign him and we'll have to see. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to we'll have to see what the Niners choose to do in the offseason, who they want to bring back, who can they afford to bring back. And, yeah, it's exciting. Don Lynch is going to have a lot of thinking to do, a lot of moves to be made. And, you know, I'm sure they're going to be working overtime to, to look at guys' contracts and see, all right, you know, which which contracts fit within the within the salary cap. Yeah, I'd like to see them re-sign Kerry Hyder as well. And absolutely, you know, we we yeah. may not be able to afford him, unfortunately, but we'll have to see how it works out. Yeah, he, he played his, his himself off the team because of how well he played. So, yeah, it's, yeah it's I think crazy. a team is gonna a team looking to to beef up their pass rush is gonna just give them a much bigger contract than the, the Niners are gonna be able to afford right now. So we'll see if he gives them uh, the, the hometown discount and you know wants to stay with team that gave him a chance or does he go elsewhere you know does robert sala take him to a, yeah. whatever team detroit lions yeah he, uh, he chooses to go to <laughs> you know it would be pretty awesome if sala just decided to give it one more season with the niners which is not likely but he did talk about it he said right now i'm still with the 49ers and he's not letting the, those things distract him because, uh, you know, obviously he's probably going to get a pretty big job here pretty soon, but man, it's just great to see that defensive unit come together. But looking back at the offense, uh, CJ seemed to have protection. As you were saying, it looked like the offensive line really put the effort in and we're communicating really well, but let's get down in the trenches with Lucas Ortiz. Down in the trenches with Lucas Ortiz. Down in the trenches. So break it down for us, Lucas. All right, buddy. Let's uh, let's start on the left side. I thought Trent Williams, uh, a week after being named to what is it, his his eighth Pro Bowl, probably played his best game. I mean, he was ridiculously good in the run game. Um, I, I just recalled a couple plays in particular where he just looked like he pushed the defender, I mean, two or three yards back and he got some pancakes on some linebackers. Uh, don't think he gave up any pressures. Lakin Thomason, another solid game is probably the best season of his career. Yeah. Um, being a first round draft pick, you know, it wasn't looking all that great as his first five years until he got to the 49ers. Um, he was, he was kind of considered to be a flop. Is he a free agent next year? Do you know, he, or is he still, I think he is under contract. Okay, good. I'm not 100% sure, but I think he is under contract. 
Uh, Trent Williams is obviously a uh, free agent, and we're going to need to bring him back next year and solidify that offensive line for years to come. But those two as a tandem, they could anchor that left side for a, at least another five years if the, the 49ers want to. For sure. Want to and can afford to bring him back. Center position looked really good. I, I really liked how Daniel Brunskill's seemed to kind of gotten better and better each week at that position. And he seems a lot more comfortable. I think he's become definitely more of a quarterback at the quarterback of the offensive line and is really getting much more inclined to making line calls and just putting guys in, in the right spot and knowing, you know, what the defense is trying to throw at them and, and recognize if, you know, if there is a blitz, if there's not a blitz, those types of things he's gotten much better at. And I've really liked the progression he's made throughout the season, you know, kind of shaky there at first, you know, didn't have a ton of experience at that position. And, yeah. you know, we kind of expected some of those growing pains, but he's really come through, especially these last three weeks. He's really shown that he's become the center of the future. If the, if the Niners want to uh, keep him at that position or, you know, if they want to maybe draft or bring in a free agent to be more of a natural center and put him at, at one of his natural positions, which would be guard. So Really like Daniel's uh, game. Let's go with the right tackle next, McGlinchey. McGlinchey had a hell of a game. Now, everyone's going to probably point out to the one glaring mistake he made where he got beat. Yeah. And, yes, it was one bad play out of many good plays that he made. So I thought he had a top-notch game. You know, he's one of the biggest reasons that we had such a huge game by uh, Jeff Wilson on the ground and was able to get all those yards because yeah. he's one of the best, you know, PFF-graded run blockers in the NFL. Unfortunately, he hasn't been graded quite as high at the uh, pass blocking aspect of it. But, you know, it's it's something that he can improve on, and I think he will next year. I think he is going to beef up and put back some of that weight that he took off in the offseason. And uh, he'll be back to see one of the better caliber right tackles in the league. And then over to the right guard spot, it looked like Justin Skill got the start and uh, played pretty well up until he, he looked like he got hurt about halfway through the game. Uh, don't know if it's that severe of an injury, but it gave Colton McKivitz, the rookie, an opportunity to come in. Oh, and he did right. a pretty, pretty good job. I didn't see any glaring mistakes. Um, it looked like the, the offense didn't miss a beat with him in there. And they were still creating those big holes for Jeff Wilson Jr. So, you know, this was one of the best games that, that the 49ers offensive line had all year. Uh, I would say this in the Patriot game, probably the two games that I would point to as being the ones where they just had a lot of continuity and there was pretty much just dominating on the line of scrimmage and, and having their way with the other team. So I liked what I saw and I want to see some more of that next week against the Seahawks. Yeah. You could really feel that they were communicating better and that allowed us to have a huge day in the running game. And, you know, Beathard, he got sacked a couple times. You're always going to get a few sacks, but for the most part, it seemed like he had time. He did. He had a lot of time and, he, he was able to even scramble a little bit on some plays where it wasn't necessarily bad pass blocking, but there wasn't a lot of, you know, there was some plays where the guys weren't open and the coverage was really good. And he just, he just had to escape some pressure. He's a tough guy, but he's got to learn how to slide. Cause he, if you're the only quarterback <laughs> available, <Yeah. laughs> he's a tough guy. Oh, oh, you want to fuck with me? Man, that was a little scary. He, he hung tough on the po in the pocket a couple plays where, you know, he knew he was going to get hit right in the mouth. And we've seen it before in games that he's played that he's willing to take a, yeah. a big hit in order to get rid of the ball and stay in the pocket. So. Guys, I, thought, I thought you kitchen guys were, were tough guys. Tough neck. We're just crazy. He, he gave the offensive line a, a really good opportunity to to block for him and know where he was. You know, he doesn't leave the pocket unless he absolutely has to. And uh, I thought he did a good job of getting the rid of the ball a little faster than he normally does. And he kind of has a tendency, or he had a tendency in the in the past to hold on to the ball a little too long. But he was a a little more inclined to to throw it on time and get the ball where it needed to be. Definitely, and the fact that he had one, I think he was one of nine when he was a starter in 2018. Then along came Garoppolo right after he had his first win. CJ. And now he starts again and gets another win. So that's actually two wins in a row for him. It's just skipped a couple of years there. There you go. That's one way to look at it. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. It's great to see him actually lead the team to victory. And uh, the line really came together. Like you said, I think this team, if, if we can keep a lot of these guys for next year, 
especially Trent Williams, we're going to be good. We're going to be back in the playoffs. We're going to have a deep run in the playoffs and we can get this type of offensive line play for next season. Well, I always like to listen to your critique of the line and it was great to see them go on on a really positive note in this game. Hopefully next week will be more of the same. And then eventually we'll get back down in the trenches with Lucas Ortiz. Down in the trenches with Lucas Ortiz. Down in the trenches. I think we probably would have heard something if Garoppolo was going to play in this next game. Yeah, it looks like the Niners are not going to play Jimmy for the final game of the year. And I think it's partly because they really don't want to further injure that ankle. You know, he injured it yeah. twice. And I think the second time was a lot worse than the first. So, you know, being that the team really doesn't have much to play for other than uh, pride and paychecks, um, I think they're, they're willing to just let Beathard get the start for this last game and, you know, ride some of that momentum from uh, this last win. Um, it's interesting to see what the 49ers choose to do with Jimmy in the offseason. You know, we talked about it last week with, with Damon Bruce, and, you know, we, we heard his, his take on it. He thinks that he's going to come back, but you never know. You know, John and Kyle might have a different opinion and may want to take this team in a different direction. You know, there's going to be some free agents out there, some guys with talent, We'll see how that uh, we'll see how that plays out. Yeah, and when it comes down to it, they may not know at this moment whether or not they're going to keep Jimmy or not. I just hope he doesn't end up back in New England because that's just yeah, that's our worst nightmare, right? Ah, yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, as a fan, you just don't want to see him go lead them to a Super Bowl. That would be devastating. I mean, hopefully, we'll have somebody else who take us to the promised land before that. But Jimmy is our best quarterback on this team, and I hope he's back next year. Me too, buddy. Me too. I agree. So we had a lot of good plays, a lot of good players in that game. And it's time for the Ortiz overachievers. Overachievers. So who do you like, man? Yeah, this week's this week's overachiever has to be Jeff Wilson Jr. I mean, could it be anybody else? Nope. I mean, this guy, <laughs> this guy, <laughs> undrafted free agent works his ass off just to make the team a year ago or two years ago. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Coming into this season, I think he was listed as the fourth running back on the depth chart. And, you know, because of injuries, because of COVID, because of 2020, he wound up being probably one of the most unsung heroes on the team. And I think, uh, you know, he showed his toughness, Definitely. not just his last game, but the entire season. Yeah. So I'm kind of recapping his, his whole season, not just his last game. You know, he, he, he led the team in rushing, um, I think in at least three different games this year. Um, and I think he might even still have a chance to be the team's overall rushing rec rushing leader for the season. Um, if he has a pretty good game next, next week against Seahawks, he could, he could leapfrog uh, Raheem Mostert for that prize. Um, yeah, I just loved everything about his game. And it was running the ball tough, breaking tackles, hitting the, hitting the hole extremely hard, you know, making, making big plays out of small plays. Um, he even had his biggest play was a reception, right? You know, he had that touchdown reception. Oh yeah. That was on beautiful. the crossing. Yeah. That was a beautiful play where he, uh, he, he had a crossing play, the crossing route, caught the ball, made some moves found pay dirt. And, uh, that was probably the most exciting play on the game on the offensive side, right. For the 49ers. Yep. So, uh, yeah, man, really, really just have to hand it to him. Um, love this guy. really hope he comes back on this team and along with Raheem Moster will give us that, that elite one, two punch at the running back position and, uh, looking forward to seeing more of Jeff Wilson jr. Yeah, man. Great pick for the overachiever, obviously. And I like that I mean, you don't like the reason because guys are hurt, but it was just nice to see him be the back that you know he can be instead of just a goal line guy. He's an all around great player. He runs great routes. He's got soft hands. Um, everyone remembers that that touchdown winning catch he has last season against the Cardinals, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. We we seem to be able to to use our running backs out of the backfield and, and get touchdown catches against the Cardinals all the time. Cause if I remember correctly, the first game of the season, that was Raheem Mostert's first touchdown was a pass reception, kind of a crossing pattern 
through the middle where he uh, he beat the rookie linebacker for a touchdown in the beginning of the year. Nice. Well, congratulations to Jeff Wilson Jr. for being this week's Ortiz overachiever. overachiever. You know, I actually noticed that I thought McKinnon even had a little bounce in his step in that game. I mean, we didn't use him a whole lot, but on special teams and then the few times that he did carry the ball, he was a little faster than it seemed when back when he, you know, when they made him the feature back. Right. Did you notice that? Right. Yeah. I think he had a little more pep to his step. You know, he's, he hasn't really been used a whole lot this, this last part of the season. So he should have some fresh legs coming into it and, I don't think he's going to be back with the team next year, but you know, he might be auditioning for another team and it's going to be important for him to look good. This, these last two games or this last game coming up, this, this game that just passed, he had a pretty, he had a pretty decent performance. And I think this, this next game against the Seahawks, given an opportunity, he's, he's going to look to have uh, some big plays, but you're right. Jerk McKinnon. You know, I was surprised that he was the most healthy back all year, you know, despite the last two years, him essentially being out of football and being hurt. And, uh, yeah, you know, if you look back at this season, he's been the healthiest running back that we've had. I don't think he's been on the IR once or been on the COVID list or missed a game. Right. Yeah. I mean, they just have to, they had to learn how to use him properly because he doesn't have that big burst anymore, but he has been healthy and that's, saying more than you can about, you know, half the team. Yeah. Right. Of all people, you he was the last <laughs> guy you'd expect to be the healthiest him and Jason Verrett. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, both guys have pretty much missed two years of football yeah. and were two of the healthiest 49ers all year. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it is. So, so wait, we just beat Seattle. I'm sorry. We beat Arizona in Arizona and that was an away game, correct? That was an away game. Okay. Now Seattle comes to Arizona to play the Niners, which will be basically be our home home. The last game of the season, we need to beat our rivals, the Seattle Seahawks, Russell Wilson. He needs to have a bad game. What do you think the keys are to the victory here? What do we need to do to beat the Seahawks with the team we have right now, Lucas? Well, I think the defense needs to play a very similar game to what what we just saw against the Cardinals. I think Fred Warner is going to be all over the place. You know, he's in the, uh, the film room as we speak, breaking down every single throw and play that they've ever run this season. And if we lose, it's not going to be because of Fred Warner or any of the other guys on the defense. I think they're going to show up. I think that we're going to put a hurting on that offensive line, which isn't all that great. You know, they haven't been the uh, as, as good in pass protecting as they've been in the past. I think they have a very mediocre run game. So, you know, there's going to be opportunities to have takeaways and stops on the defense. We're also going to have to not turn the ball over like we, we've done in, in the past, especially against uh, teams like the Seahawks Yeah, earlier on in the season. So I think those are going to be the two biggest things is not turning the ball over, getting a couple takeaways on defense, you know, sh- hitting Russell Wilson at every opportunity, whether it's legal, illegal within the play or late, I don't get, I don't care. Just, just make them just, just put them on the ground and, you know, let the, let the ambulance sort it out. You know, I want (laughs) to, I want to hit him so hard that he has snot bubbles come out of his nose. I mean, that's just, (laughs) that's how I feel about Russell Wilson, you know, muscles. Uh, We'll see. You know, I'm looking forward to, to this game and I, I want to, I want to see us end the season on a high note and take some of that momentum into the next year. I'd like to see us get a few more sacks on Russell Wilson uh, this week. And what do you think for a final score, Lucas? Ooh, so I'm thinking it's going to be a pretty high scoring game. I think the Niners can score 35 against the Seahawks. And I think we're going to hold them to about 28. So 35, 28 high scoring affair. But I I do think there are going to be some turnovers by the offense. Unfortunately, like I'm just a realist and, (laughs) you know, despite (laughs) me picking the the team, our team to win against the Seahawks, I do think we are going to have some turnovers and they are going to lead to some points for, for the Seahawks, but the defense is going to play strong. And I think they're going to hold them off in the end. 
What about you? How do you see it going down? All right. I need Robbie solid gold to be Robbie solid gold. Cause I don't know who that guy was who missed all those kicks. Yeah. We didn't even talk about that. <laughs> what, kept what? Arizona in the game, man. That, that cannot happen. He damn near gave me a, a heart attack that game. What was going oh on? With Robbie? I mean, he was just, yeah, we could have just sealed it. Chip shots. <laughs> chip shots. He never misses under inside the 40 or inside the 50. Yeah. Especially inside the 40. I don't know if, I think he just, I think he didn't eat his Wheaties or whatever happened. So what's going to happen in this game is, He's going to get a 52 yard field goal to win the game. Niners win. Niners win 31 to 28. Okay. I'll take it. Game winning field goal, huh? Yeah. And I hope our defense gets a few takeaways in this game because it seems to be what ends up the keys to victory is who's going to turn the ball over <laughs> and who's not. Because I like that. Uh, I think there was the one fumble CJ had, but other than that, he didn't make a lot of big mistakes, and that was good to see. That was the key. That was the key to victory. Always nice talking Niners with you. Yeah, one more game. We'll see what the offseason has in store for the 49ers. You know, we got the draft to look forward to. I mean, of course, we're going to pay attention a little bit to the playoffs, but really most Niner fans are looking to the draft. They're going to start looking at scouting reports and draft scouts and all the noise about who, who's going to be the possible uh, draft pick or moves to be made yep. in the off season. Well, it's been a great season working with you, man. I, I, I really appreciate all the time and effort and everything that you've put into the show. It's always great talking Niners with you, Lucas. So go Niners and uh, we'll talk to you really soon, man. Absolutely. I appreciate you, man. Go Niners. All right. Later. Absolutely. Take care, buddy. <laughs>